Welcome to this edition of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. This episode, we're going to be taking a look at uh, designing up some of these. What are these, you ask? Well, these are fixture blocks. So I've been doing a lot of work lately on the CNC, and so I found the need to be able to uh, design up in an ad hoc fashion different uh, milling surfaces and, and clamps and things like that. So what I decided to do is whip up a solution based upon the 123 block that machinists find so popular and handy for a similar purpose. And with these blocks, basically what I've done is I've designed a, a, a simple program here in OpenSCAD that allows me to create blocks to meet my needs. So there's the basic aspects of it. We have the bolt diameter we have the grid, the X grid, Y grid, Z grid, and on center. So the on center is the center to center separation of each one of these bolts where the bolt size is obviously the size of the opening. And the number of holes in the X, Y, and Z coordinate planes are defined by these in the grid setting. So for example, if we wanted to change uh, the Z grid to one, all we do is hit this and boom, we have a rather flat looking um, fixture. So this really has come in handy and I'll talk about it in a, in a minute a little bit and we'll actually go to the bench and see some of these printed out and put to use. Uh, before going there one of the things I do want to talk about is how I put this together. So the block itself is rather simple. That's this first piece up here in the union section of my standard code format and what it does is takes these di different pieces of information from the grid and on center to create the actual block. However, if we take the block away, let's comment out the block real quick, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the in interior structure that we difference out. Now, one of the things that becomes rather mathematically intensive are these joins between these columns or these cylinders, and especially if we start adding, for example, three deep or you know any type of number, it's got to calculate for each one of these, and that becomes a rather daunting task for any computer. So expect the renders on these to take actually quite some time, actually from a few minutes up to a half hour in some cases, depending upon the size of your fixture. Just want to forewarn you on that. Also the same thing when you're using the customizer on Thingiverse, it is rather slow because of that reason. So what I've also done is to achieve this, I've set up a series of for loops. So one of the key ones is I have to set up an overall for loop for the Z axis. And then what I do is I come down and, and perform the Z uh, creation of the holes. Then I perform the X creation and the Y creation of all the grid holes. And this is what you see over here becomes the difference that we take outside of the cube, or out of the cube, not really outside of the cube. So uh, again, this is a pretty handy piece. So one of the things I do want to jump over is I've uploaded this to uh, Thingiverse as a customizer. And you see a couple objects here. And one of the things, we'll go over to the bench in a minute, take a look at these in real life. However, I just kind of wanted to share with what it looks like in, in the actual Thingiverse. So here's the customizer object of a block. With the, and again, you can see the various settings over here work in pretty much the same fashion. So. If we want to increase the Y, we just simply move the slider, and you can see it calculating over here, and it changes the block size. Uh, and notice it takes a little bit of time. It, it is rather intensive because of those joins of the cylinders for the difference. So uh, just, again, jumping back here. Outside of that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. There is some, a little bit of wankiness that's probably worth stealing in the calculation of the size of the cylinders. Uh, it took me a little bit of thinking to kind of come up with a way to match this all together because, again, one of the things you're doing is you're taking this grid as well as this on-center dimension to create this whole size as well as taking into account the bolt diameter. Now, I haven't yet provided any logic in here to protect you from the bolt diameter becoming larger than the on-center diameter, so I'm assuming you're going to keep yourself safe from that aspect. Maybe a future version I'll add that as well as tapering to the holes. I didn't do that in this version, so if there's enough interest, please let me know in the comments or on Thingiverse, and, and I'll look at adding a, a taper function to the uh, openings of these. Uh, outside of that, it's basically pretty straightforward. This has been a real handy, um, uh, you know, design. I, I printed out a bunch of these, and this is kind of like what I'm referring to as machinist Lego block. So, uh, anyways, tell you what, enough of my rambling here. The code will be out on the website. The link will be below, so you can go out there, borrow it, steal it, whatever you want with it. Um, 
on the other side, we'll take a look at the bench of how this all goes together. So uh, since I did print this in ABS on the DaVinci, again, it, it uh, not the best for time lapse. I didn't do a time lapse this time around, so apologies. But we'll meet over at the bench and we'll see what this all looks like when it comes together. Welcome back. So uh, we didn't do a time lapse of these. I printed these on the DaVinci, so this is not really time lapse friendly, but I think you kind of get the idea. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen um, the results of them printing. However, I printed out a couple, and man, oh man, I am really impressed with the way that they've uh, worked out. So here I've got one of the larger blocks actually bolted to one of the vertical blocks. And I printed out a couple of these uh, vertical blocks, actually. Um, both of, this is all out of ABS, and that's what I got printing in the background. That's what you hear, is I'm printing more of these out of ABS to build the vise. I'm actually going to do um, a video series on the main channel, DIY 3D Tech, for the vise system for the... Um, uh, CNC. However, th this is great because, you know, as you can see, I think these are 8mm uh, bolts. And what I did is I made the holes in the red bigger than the holes in, in the black. And because this is ABS and it has some pretty good flexure, I could actually just self-tap these right in. And, and man, oh man, this is really cool. So these four bolts are self-tapped into here. They tapped in very nicely, and again, I think this goes to show if you really, uh, you know, watch your hole diameters, um, you can do the whole threading thing, I think, pretty good. The other thing I'm going to kind of tip I'm going to share with you guys is, is using the uh, FN uh, variable with these because, again, uh, you know, with the with the uh, you know FN variable, again, you're it depend it's going to kind of make it. Um, how many corners you have in your circle and what this really works great for is using a lower FN number if you're going to try the self tapping now these are at 60 and if I were to do this I would probably go down to maybe even 30 um, and open up the hole size a little bit more and the advantage you're going to get from that you're going to use a little bit less plastic it's probably going to run a little bit faster and you're going to get more edges for the threads to catch on. So it's, it, it's almost like self-threading. Um, so pretty interesting scenario. So that's a little trick that I've learned and I've been playing around with. And I'll probably do an episode on that in the near future. But since I'm thinking about it, I figured I'd share it. So again, this, these came out really cool. And the idea is, is again, um, you can build all sorts of fixtures. You know, again, I could bolt this one here. I could bolt this one here. I could bolt it on here. I could bolt it here and come across and the idea is is you could have rods that go through here with uh, t-nuts on the back to mount into a machine to do machining uh, you can create sort of a, a jack vise out of it uh, because this is what I'm going to actually do in, in one of the videos for DIY 3D Tech directly I'm going to show you how to make a vise out of these actually for the CNC uh, so you'll have to watch that one to figure it out so anyways hopefully you found this interesting I did make a Thingiverse thingy out of this so you can make all your own blocks to your heart's content if there's enough, enough interest I'll probably add a taper function to this but you know so far this has worked out great without the taper um, so if I get bored maybe I'll add it on a plane trip sometime so hey if you found this interesting if you helped it out if it helped you out I'll spit it out hey give it a big thumbs up and then also don't forget to subscribe to the channel over there and hit up the swag shop too, help out the channel so we'll see you in the next video cheers